Hey Divination, this is Karthik from Design School for WordPress Beginners and in this video, I'll show you how to add tooltips to your WordPress website only by using the DV page builder that you already have. You don't have to install any third party plugins. All you need to do is to add a bit of code and change few properties. Well, when the user hovers over a word or a group of words, a text floats above that in the form of a bubble, helping the user understand what exactly that text is. Maybe your site is all about SEO and you're explaining him search engine rankings. So you can basically specify or help him understand what he's hovering over more clearly using tooltips. Open any page or post or any custom post type with Divi Builder using the Visual Builder interface and click on add new section. Add regular section, pick a row and add module called code module. Search for it, click on it and you need to copy and paste the text that I'm going to share with you in the description. So I'll explain what this text is all about. And not just here, you can add this code module anywhere you want this tooltip to appear. So if you have a section with rows and columns like this one, you can add a tooltip module here. Wherever your section permits, you can add tooltips or wherever you want this tooltip, you can add it. Okay, so basically this code has two parts. One is the style tag, which basically is your CSS. So whatever is in between the style tag is responsible for styling this tooltip and also hiding the other element unless and until you hover over it. So the CSS module or the CSS code is responsible for hiding that black pop-up box, which would have been visible regularly and it will show it only on hover. That's what this last piece of code is all about. So by default, you hide the tooltip and only on hover, you show it right exactly at the middle of this one. So how do you do it? Well, there are few properties. You don't have to understand all of them. You can leave most of the properties as is and you can change the border of this one. So you can maybe add a red color. You can either type it or click on this wheel and it will give you a color wheel. Let me reposition this model. So you can maybe give it a red border. So something like that. So that will basically change the border. And sometimes you may find your tooltip not being shown. So you can close this module once and open it again. So then your tooltip appears back. This is some problem with DV's built-in functionality. So don't have to worry about that. It will be shown in your end page. So don't worry. So once you add all this code, you have something called div. Don't have to understand. One is the tooltip class, which is basically the text, which is shown to the user. And the second one is a span class or the tooltip text which is basically this floating window that sits right above the text below it. So the hover over me is your main text. Basically you can put your word here and in tooltip text you can put abbreviation of that word. So that's the easiest explanation you can find. And let's see what all you can change. So you can change the border of this one or remove it altogether by deleting this property. So if I delete this, there will be no, no border on top of this, just like that. I'll restore it so that the user will understand, okay, there's something going on with this text. And the next thing is tooltip text. So we want to hide it unless and until user hovers over it. So we'll change the visibility to hidden. And here we'll change the visibility to visible on hover. So that's what this visibility is doing. Width is the width of this tooltip box. And you don't want to have an absolute width. What do I mean by absolute width? It's hard coded in pixels. So let's say if you have five words here. So let me show it to you. So let's say you have this. 
and your tooltip just appears like that and let's say I have a bigger definition like this one as you can see the width is kind of congested and if you have a bigger definition you want this definition to be properly shown so you can do one thing we can change the width from an absolute to percentage meaning it will take the amount of width that is basically the width of the words so if you say 100% you mean that the tooltip text should be as wide as the text over here so if it's three letters wide the tooltip text will also be three letters wide and if it's four letters wide the tooltip text will also be four letters wide so let me show it to you hover over me like this so this is the width so it's five letters wide and you can see the box is as wide as the tooltip itself so that's what it means so I want the width to be 100% or the same width as the number of words in the text below this, this hover over me text. Of course, background color, I can change it. I simply want it to be blue colored like this one. Color is the text color. So if you want to change the text color, you can do it. You can say red here. You can get that but I don't want I think white looks better text align it aligns the text border radius is to make the corners rounded in this tooltip text as you can see the rectangle is a bit rounded on the edges and this is the property you can add as much width as you want you can maybe add 20 pixels and you can see how that looks that looks a bit more bubble padding is the typical padding that you find bottom left and margin left are really important so here's a trick that you need to follow so whichever width you specify divi's code editor is a bit choppy so if you find it's not functioning properly you can copy the whole code cut it paste it again or maybe reload the page and that will do the trick and sometimes it won't show the exact output that's basically some error with divi but that happens very rarely and you shouldn't be worried about that and as you can see I've changed the text here to seven words and you can see my bubble is seven words wide so it's as wide as seven words because of the property I specified here width 100% by that I mean this tooltip text should be as wide as the number of words in the word below it so this bubble will be as wide as the number of words and whenever you change the value over here you can also give a 200% here also make sure you change the margin left value to 100% so that way tooltip is always positioned at the at the middle of it so whatever value you give either in pixels em or whatever always make sure this is half of that and that way you will always position the tooltip at the center. You can play with these values and see how the tooltip is repositioned. So if you change the bottom percentage, you can see how that's repositioned. And let's give a negative percentage. And you can see where the tooltip is positioned. So you can tweak these values to your liking. And if you find a value or if you want that, if you want the tooltip to begin at the starting, you can do this. can remove the left 50 percentage and you can see that tooltip starts from the first word of or the first letter of the text below it so you can basically play with the properties and always make sure whichever width you specify here left should be half of it and margin left should also be half but in negative value and that's all so that's how you position your tooltip let me also change the background color of the bubble to blue and the next one is simply this tooltip arrow 
So this is a pseudo CSS element, but you don't have to understand any of that. You can change all of the values as is, except you can change maybe the color. So if it's a blue bubble, it's good to also make the arrow blue. So this whole after thing stands for this small little arrow that sits right below the speech bubble. So that's it. That's all you need to do. And you can change this text. So you can say, hey there. Want to know more? And also this one. So I can change. I'm here and I'm always there. As you make changes in this text, you can see the changes right there. So if you want the bubble to be twice as large, again, come back to this tooltip text, make it twice as large and don't tell you, DV's code editor is a bit rough. So it may not show you the preview properly. So you may have to copy the code, cut it, paste it again. So that will give you the right preview. Don't worry, it will be properly displayed on your page. Only in the preview, you'll have some problem. If you happen to do so, just copy the entire code, cut it, try pasting it and preview the code. And you can see how your tooltip will look like. So there are basically four kinds of tooltips, one above the text, one below the text, one on the left side, one on the right side. I'll share the code for each one and you can tweak the values and see how that tooltip will be positioned. Generally, it's this tooltip that's more commonly used in websites and everywhere across operating systems. So this is how you make tooltips on your own just by using the DV page builder. Don't worry, entire code will be in the description. Make sure you play with it and let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And there's more advanced version of tooltips that I made for Elementor, which I'll be making for DV in the next tutorial. So stay tuned for that. If you're new here, consider subscribing. Make sure you give that a thumbs up and I'll talk to you in the next video. Peace. And that's it for now and hope you guys like this video. If you did, make sure you give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And if you need anything else, don't hesitate to ask. I'm ready to help you. Catch you in the next video. Peace.